Hello, and welcome to Be Red Cross Ready, How You Can Prepare for Home Fires. My name is Melissa Como, and I am the director of the Military and Veteran Caregiver Network here at the American Red Cross. And I am delighted to be joined by Barbara Weber, our Disaster Program Manager for Idaho and Montana region, along with our wonderful volunteer, Danina Scholl. Tonight, we're gonna to learn a little bit how we can prevent and prepare for home fires. Danina, Barbara, please take it away. Thank you very much, Melissa. We're so happy that you could join us today for this discussion about home fire safety. Um, every eight minutes, the Red Cross responds to a disaster and a vast majority of these are home fires. Um, in a typical year, home fires kill more people than all natural disasters combined in the United States. So that's why we're really passionate about help, helping people, you know, prevent and prepare for home fires. Next slide, please. Let's look at some of the major causes of home fires and home fire fatalities. Cooking equipment is the leading cause of home fires and home fire related injuries and accounts for 19% of home fire fatalities. As you can see here, malfunctioning at 16% and improper use at 19% of heating, electrical, and lighting equipment together account for 35% of home fire fatalities. And while only 5% of home fires are started by smoke materials, these fires are the leading cause of home fire fatalities. So how can you help reduce the risk of fire in your home? Some home fires can be prevented by following some basic safety tips that we're gonna talk about here. Next slide, please. So one of the important things to remember is that um, home fires in um, unattended cooking is responsible for a third of reported home cooking fires. So you want to always stay in the kitchen when something's cooking on the stove. Don't walk away even just for a second into the other room because it only takes a moment for you know, a, a cooking item on the stove to burst into flames. So remember to keep an eye on what you fry. Install and learn how to use a fire extinguisher. Um, and if you're uncertain about how to use those, you can contact your local fire department for some training on that. Next slide, please. If you recall, 25% of home fires are the result of malfunctioning or improperly used heating, electrical, and lighting equipment. So you can reduce this risk by remembering some safety tips. More than half of the deaths resulted come from home heating fires are caused by heating equipment that's too close to things that burn. You wanna make sure that anything that could catch fire, such as furniture, curtains, dish towels, or clothing, is at least three feet away from any heat source. Remember, three feet from the heat. And always plug appliances directly into wall outlets. You wanna avoid using extension cords if at all possible. Extension cords are intended for temporary use. And if necessary, you can have a qualified electrician um, install more outlets in your home to reduce the use of extension cords. And you want to over, avoid overloading outlets Sorry, or extension cords. You want to avoid overloading outlets or extension cords. Don't plug multiple power strips or extension cords with several items attached into the same outlet. And make sure your electrical cords aren't damaged or running under carpets attached by nails or in high traffic areas. Next slide, please. Failing to properly extinguish smoking materials, including cigarettes, pipes, and cigars, is the leading cause of residential home fires in the United States. So if you or anyone in your home, including guests, smokes, you wanna to remember to always try to smoke outside if possible. But if you do smoke indoors, never smoke in bed, please don't smoke when drowsy, and also be very careful not to smoke around anyone that's using an oxygen tank, and that includes medical oxygen. You want to use deep, sturdy ashtrays and always properly put out the butts, the good douse in water before disposing of them is best. You want to be very careful if you're smoking outside, not to put them into a receptacle that might have flammable items because the fire can quickly spread from that container to the house. Um, keep matches and lighters out of children's reach, preferably in a locked cabinet or a container where they're out of sight as well. So the curious little fingers don't get into those. And if you vape, never leave it charging un overnight or unattended and always use the charger that it came with. And if you need to replace the batteries that are wet or damaged, be sure you do so. Next slide, please. Now that we've talked about safety tips for reducing the risk of home fires, I wanna remind you about the extreme importance of working smoke alarms. Did you know that research conducted by the National Fire Protection Association 
shows that three out of every five home fire deaths happen in homes with either no smoking alarms or non-working smoke alarms. Not only that, but having a working smoke alarm cuts the risk of dying in a home fire by half. And on average, seven people die every day in home fires. That's why this is so critically important. And there are important things to remember when it comes to smoke alarms. You want to install them on every level of your home, inside bedrooms and outside sleeping areas. It's also highly recommended that they be interconnected or hardwired. So when one alarm sounds, they all sound. You wanna test the alarms every month, just press the button and make sure that the alarm goes off. Replace the batteries at least once a year for the alarms that, that have batteries that you need to replace. Many alarms these days have an internal uh, 10 year battery. So you want to obviously replace, replace those smoke alarms every 10 years. You also want to replace those hardwired smoke alarms every 10 years. So just remember every 10 years to replace the smoke alarms and to make sure if they do have batteries that you're checking those and please don't unplug those batteries. Um, I know it can be tempting to disconnect uh, smoke alarms after it's sounded because something you're cooking generates too much smoke, but never disable a smoke alarm, even temporarily. You can use the silent or hush feature if you're getting a nuisance alarm. Um, if you experience frequent uh, false or nuisance alarms, consider relocating that to another area where the smoke is going to get to it quite as much. Um, older individuals and those who are deaf or hard of hearing are particularly at risk of a home fire because they might not be able to hear the sound of a smoke alarm. So the devices are available to overcome this challenge. They can use a low pitch sound, um, vibrations under the mattress or pillow, or even strobe lights. Additional resources are for individuals with access and functional needs might be, may be available through your community's Center for Independent Living. Next slide, please. So everyone in your household needs to know what to do when a smoke alarm sounds. If a fire starts in your home, you may have less than two minutes to escape safely. So the big thing to remember is to get out and stay out. Leave everything behind, get out as quickly as possible and never, never go back into a burning building. If smoke or fire blocks one of your ways out, use another way out, just get out. And if you might have to go through smoke, try to get low to go under the smoke to escape. Everyone in your household should plan to meet as a designated safe meeting place um, and definitely wait until after you get out of the house and are in a safe place to call 911. So Danina is going to talk to you about developing an escape plan and making sure you're prepared in the event of a home fire. Thank you, Barbara. All right, can we go to the next slide, please? Perfect. All right, so we should talk more about how to plan your escape route. Each room should have two exits, such as a door and a window. Make sure that windows and doors open easily to allow for quick escape. If your home has security bars, make sure the bars have emergency release devices inside so that they can be opened immediately in the event of an emergency. Consider escape ladders for second floor sleeping areas or homes on the second floor or above. It's also important to keep escape routes free of clutter and tripping hazards. Um, this can be especially important when you practice going through finding out where you have something that's in the way that might impede your exit, your access to a door. Um, having things on the floor, having things in the way. When you go through and practice, it might not seem like a big deal, but you have a very limited amount of time to leave your home and be safe. So make sure that you practice, 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 and find a very safe, direct, clear route out of the house. So you can see it. the diagram shows each room has two ways out. The first escape path out of each room is through the door and then out of the house. The second escape plan is through the nearest window in each room. Next slide, please. Knowing how to quickly get out of your home is only one part of the escape plan. A home fire is very confusing and may require members to use different escape routes. This is why you need one specific safe meeting place where everyone will meet in the event of a home fire. Identify a location that is a safe distance from your home in a specific and fixed location. Make sure it is in front of your home so that you can easily meet firefighters and let everyone know that they are safe and accounted for. Remember, always call 911 from a safe place outside your home. Next slide, please. It is vital that your escape plan works for everyone in the household. 
make arrangements for infants, children, older adults, and individuals with access or functional needs who may need assistance to escape during a home fire. Make sure that someone in the household is assigned to each person who may require assistance and be sure to identify a backup person in case the primary person is not home during a fire. In the example on the slide, the family has a two-year-old son who will need help to evacuate. Mom is the primary person and dad will help if mom is away. Remember, smoke alarms may not always wake up children in the event of a fire. Next slide, please. Once the plan is complete, written down, and shared with all household members, it should be practiced at least twice a year. If you have someone with access or functional needs, you should have a personal support network to assist during an emergency. Be sure you have them included in your plan and practice drills. Practicing makes sure that the plan will actually work for everyone and as expected. If not, you can make the necessary adjustments and practice again. This is especially important um, to practice this several times a year, practice it over and over, make sure that you understand what pitfalls might happen and what needs you might have once you get outside of the house. Um, things like assistive to devices or oxygen, you might, you might lose those in a home fire. So having a backup place, having something, maybe a neighbor or um, an outside location where you can store these things that are absolutely vital to your well-being is a good idea. <clears throat> All right, next slide, please. All right, did you know that children under five are twice as likely as other people to die in a home fire? Children need to be confident in their ability to prepare for and react to a home fire. You can ensure this when you teach them about the dangers of fire and make sure they understand that matches and lighters are not toys. Teach them what smoke alarms sound like and how to react when the smoke alarm goes off. Make sure each child knows and practices at least two ways to escape from every room and to meet at your designated safe meeting place. Emphasize the get out, stay out rule. If you have escape ladders, make sure they are stored near windows and teach everyone how to use them. If you have bars on the windows or doors, make sure that they practice how to release them. Make sure everyone knows how to call 911 and that they understand that they should should call from a safe place outside the home. Next slide, please. There are a few more things that are important when you have to escape from a home fire, particularly or if you are in a room behind closed doors. Look for smoke coming through the cracks around the door. Before opening the door, feel the door with the back of your hand. If it is hot, leave, through the, leave the closed, excuse me, leave the door closed and use your second way out. As a last resort, if you are unable to evacuate, seal your door by placing a cloth around any cracks or openings to keep the smoke out. Block all the air vents and call 911. Tell them where you are and signal for help at the window with a light colored cloth or a flashlight. Remember to practice this with everyone in the household. Next slide, please. You've gotten a lot of information today, so let's review how you can keep those, the members in your household safe with a few easy steps. Step one, make a home fire escape plan. Step two, test your smoke alarms monthly. Step three, make sure you practice your home fire escape plan at least twice a year with your entire household. All right, I'm going to hand this back to Barbara. She's gonna talk a little bit about um, our emergency app and other, other things we have available for you. Thank you, Danina. So the Red Cross, next slide, please, I'm sorry. The Red Cross Emergency app gives people instant access to customizable weather alerts, safety tips, and preparedness information for 14 different emergencies, all in one free and easy to use app. I personally have this app, I get weather alerts, and in the event of a large disaster, I can actually notify my family that I'm safe. Family members and friends across the country can help each other stay safe and connected through the app's customizable emergency alerts and content on what to do before, during, and after disasters, regardless of where they live. The app provides expert advice on what to do in the case of a tornado, hurricane, thunderstorm, wildfire, and other disasters. People can use a make a plan feature to create an emergency plan for their household so everyone knows what to do and where to go if a disaster strikes. So this app's available for free in app stores for smartphones, tablets, and wearables. It can also be found by searching for American Red Cross or going to redcross.org apps. Next slide, please. 
we've talked a lot about a lot of information. We talked earlier about the importance of smoke alarms. Um, and you can go to keep, you can keep yourself and your loved ones safe by signing up for a session with one of our volunteers to create your personal home fire escape plan and learn how to prevent fires in your home. We're also offering free smoke alarms if you need them. And we ask you to encourage the people you know to sign up for this free service as well. So for more information and to register, you can go to soundthealarm.org and use the zip code search feature to find your region and find out how to register for an appointment. These uh, tips that we've just provided to you, we feel are very important for making sure that you can prevent and prepare for home fires to keep yourself and your loved ones safe. And we really appreciate the time you spent with us here today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Barbara and Danina. For everyone who's joined us today, either in the webinar or joining us live on Facebook, you will get a follow-up email with all of the information shared, as well as how to connect with Sound the Alarm. We are so grateful for our partners sharing uh, the disaster preparedness tips with us. And you can expect these once a month now from the Military and Veteran Caregiver Network. Next month for June, we'll be talking about wildfires. And in July, we'll be talking about hurricanes. Thank you so much for all that you do for your veterans, families, caregivers, and survivors. We are always here for you. Learn more about Red Cross Military and Veteran Caregiver Network at redcross.org caregivers. Thank you all. Have a great night.